<laughs> Legitimately. This is the first time I've gotten it out of the box. There is a brand that you all know, you don't love them, but you've all heard of them before if you've been in this hobby for as long as I have. And I've got one. We're gonna unbox it, we're gonna listen to it, and we're gonna see if it's as terrible as we remembered it. And this is not it. I was actually a little bit optimistic because this box has actually got some heft to it, but I think it's sheets for my wife. I think we have a winner, 3.3 pounds. Inside this box right here is something that I've been so curious about and now we have it. If you see any part of my house, it's super messy. I get it. I don't make any money cleaning the house though. I make money by talking about making jokes about hi-fi stuff. We just had Easter yesterday. My house literally looks like if somebody broke into the Easter Bunny factory and put it all in a dump truck and then it came over and then just dumped everything in my living room. You don't care about my inability to keep my house clean. You care about what's inside this box. Let's find out together. No fancy unboxings for you. Just this video. Thinking about what's in the box of goodies that the cheap audio man has. Oh, you look at this. This, my friends, is a pile stereo amplifier. You all remember pile, right? You're in a car audio, and if you're 40 or 50, you probably had a really terrible pile amplifier in your car, or maybe even head unit. It was the brand for people that couldn't afford Alpine or Kenwood. It's like the B, C, D tier. It's like the D tier brand of stuff, but it still worked, still made music. We're gonna find out if Pile is relevant in 2024. This amp didn't say what RMS was. It said peak power of 200 watts. I'm not optimistic. Oh, the, okay. hey, it's got a remote control. Feels like it's filled with helium. Mm, so heavy, mm, barely hold the weight. It actually is kind of cute though. This kind of looks like a hi-fi toy that doesn't work and you just put it on your shelf to kind of remind you of the hobby and why you like hi-fi, except this is actually a component. It's got handles, handles on the front. Let's take a look at this thing. Look at this. Look at it in all of its wonderment. I thought this was going to be super low powered. On the back, there is a 12 volt 5 amp receptacle. Well, that's only 60 watts. It actually already has a cord affixed to it. So I guess you could power this from a car, maybe from an RV. This is great. I got to get a close up of this. So many options on here. USB input at the top. I also have an SD card slot. Toggle switch right here. Treble tone controls, uh, plastic, uh, but really, I mean, look at this thing, right? Just in case you wanted to put this in a rack, you've got the handle so that you can, you can easily pull it out. This is how big it is compared to my hand. You got bass, you have your mic, not one, but two microphones. This is the PDA-29B. You. There's even an indicator right here so you can remember where to set your volume. But then up here you have your controls. Oh my goodness. Hold on. Hold on. Hold the phone. Check this out. Old school extendable antenna, which is actually slightly bent. Oh my goodness. I feel like if I breathe on this, it's going to break. It doesn't feel like the old antennas used to feel. Like if we took them off and you could like whip your brother with the antenna. On the back one rca input two speaker connections four to 16 ohms very nice dense <laughs> this is the first time i've gotten it out of the box and there's dents from where they screwed in what at least it's tight we've got to listen to it luckily i have the sony's still out here from a previous video if we're gonna have some problems the Sony's are going to be our sacrificial lamb. Plug this thing in.
Bare wire makes me nervous, especially when you use 10 or 12 gauge wire because well, it's pretty thick. And I don't want to give this thing any excuses to short out. I think I'm gonna have to get crappy speaker wire to make sure that I don't uh, blow anything up. Looky, looky what I found. These are some little wiring harnesses that I made up for my vintage receivers. I don't have to make up any speaker cables. I can just plug these, this, into this high quality speaker amplifier. Always make sure to plug your high quality pile amplifier into an AudioQuest power conditioner that costs about 10 times as much. Really hope I don't burn the house down. Gonna do the honors. We have blue lights, look at this. This isn't terrible looking. Forgot to tell you, it was a whopping $42. I'm excited, are you excited? Not putting the Sonus Faber on here, not putting the Emotiva XB2s on here, not putting anything of value on here. I was just getting ready to uh, connect some speaker cables. I was gonna turn it off, of course, but it's humming. It's gotta be a good thing, right? Like when the head and shoulders is tingling, you know it's working. When the pile amplifier is humming, you know it's working. I just hooked up the speakers and the noise coming out of these is really amazing. <laughs> it's really amazing. Hold on. You've got to be able to hear that. I'm probably five feet from him and I can hear the noise. And I think my AC is running too. <laughs> it's so bad. Talk about vintage, vintage receiver vibes. This sounds exactly like a vintage receiver that's never been serviced ever except this is brand new. I just wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. I've got the volume turned down fairly low, but I got this microphone. Why? Because I can put the microphone up to the speaker so that you can hear, hold on, let's see what volume we're at. Okay, the volume is pretty much maybe seven o'clock. I'm gonna put this microphone up to the speaker. Do you hear that? I was actually gonna connect a decent source, but I think I'm just gonna connect Bluetooth. I just put on one. There is something definitely wrong. Sounds like it's bottoming out, but I know these speakers can take way more. Maybe it's just like losing all capacitance when it hits these bass notes. You know, this doesn't sound terrible. There's that wonderful pile house sound though. Yeah, this is too much fun. The volume's at like three o'clock. I don't feel comfortable turning it up anymore because I have a feeling this thing's gonna clip like a barber during Fleet Week. Oh, oh, oh. No good on that one. So we're clipping. 73 dB. Ooh. Yep, it lost it on the bass at about 70 dB. It actually sounds surprisingly okay from here right at the beginning of a song. It seems like it can keep up with the bass on a song for about the first three seconds. It hangs in there for a little bit. I think it's enough. All right, Pyle, you tried your best. Three reasons why you should buy this amp. You hate yourself. You wanna destroy a pair of speakers, that's two. Third reason why you should buy this amp is, I don't know, to take it apart and make a picture frame out of it. You could buy three of these and then use the face plate for the top of the picture frame, the bottom of the picture frame, and then you could like use the knobs. You could hollow it out, make it into a birdhouse for very small birds. It's terrible. 
And I've listened to a lot of cheap amplifiers, Ford amplifiers. It didn't have the ridiculous hum that this thing has. It's worse than I remembered it being. What you should do is check out this video where I actually talk about decent, ultra cheap amplification. The Fozzy Audio TB10D? Yeah, watch that video right here. It'll be worth it.